recolor firing squad embraces the darkest magics of the to lose by his why delay slaughter pushing further through the haunted trails of levels weary travelers have the unfortunate pleasure of meeting huge i mean con is huge what do you mean ah! this Mix. queen drops all regality for brute force aggressively pursuing her foes until their last breath ekes out her premier recolor permafrost imbues her attack Wait. Oh yeah, I unplugged it. Yeah, that's fine. To the cutting cold that will leave your veins frozen over. Collect these skins and additional cosmetics and rewards throughout the 30 levels in the Valor's End event pass. Only two skins again. Now, let's take a look at some new features. Observe what is this? What are these lines for? Ew. Ew. What are these for? Why is this a... Why is this a... a what? Different players will notice that we've changed some key visuals across the main menu. XP is now a green bar, and notifications have a lighter fuchsia tone. Throughout the rest of the game... Ew. Yeah, I don't like that. That that's two thousand. That's nineteen ninety nine coding. What the fuck? XP is also now represented by full circles instead of radials like prior. These changes were made alongside other color adjustments to keep our visual language consistent throughout the game. We also have made updates to the store to allow players to buy more than one booster at a given time. Ooh. Taking it deeper into the play menu will show us more updates. We've done a. I hope those. A prompt. Which one? Yeah, I think maybe this is what they see. Cause this, these, what are they called? What are these called? One booster at a given time. Digging it deeper into the play menu will show us more. Look at these, these thingies, man. That's ugly. Update. Update. We've done a pass on buttons across the game to make them more uniform. You think it's behind the parentheses? You think it's just for devs? I hope so. Wait, is that Taylor? No, it's true. That's right, the return mode will finally be available in customs, alongside some new game. Look how ugly it looks. It's so cr crowded. ...for all modes. We've added more options to augment credit gain to allow players to experiment with new ideas. We've got a few more major features for you all, so let's head into a game. Welcome back to Snowfall Junction, but a version some older players may remember. We've brought back the details removed from the map during beta, now restored to its modern iteration. From the frozen ponds near the spawns, to the glowing windows showing life in the fort, to the trees off in the distance, this map feels so much cozier with these back. However, that won't last much longer. I don't care about this. Chief blanks, always ruining the piece. You'll notice most of these ones apply marks to their targets, and Lexus has moved from where it normally is on screen. Look down at our health bar, and you'll see... I don't like it down there. Why is it down there? I like it up here so I can see it. All those hostile effects now displayed there. We've moved familiar marks like Lilith and Omen, as well as added the likes of Ceres and Genos to this improved version. No. So not only help players keep track of what is causing effects on them, I, uh, but more nuanced decision making in gameplay. Now that's instead of looking in the middle of the screen, I'll have to divert my eyes bottom left. Now that we've explored these general features, let's address the spirit among us. For the first time in five years, a champion is forsaking their class to join a new one. Kasumi is now a flank. What's with the bars? I thought in the middle. I think it was it was okay on the left side. As a part of re envisioning the Death's Hal, we have made changes to every single ability in her kit. They look the, the same. Doll will now have increased damage and less lockout time, but reduced range to be closer to her new peers. Savage Tear is shifting from a kill button to a more nuanced sustain. She'll now have it up more often, but with reduced damage. However, instead of disarming her targets at max stacks, she will self-heal an amount based on each stack she has on an opponent. This ability Useless. now also generates stacks, meaning it can be used as an engagement tool. Meanwhile, 
body and soul has been transformed into a true movement ability. You will still leave your body behind. However, Kasumi's spirit is fully invisible to enemies, and when you cancel it, she reappears at the spirit's location now. This makes her extra crafty in how she dips through the maps and approaches team fights. Spirit Lair is also renamed Spirit Traps and takes on the functionality of her old Talent 2 Spirit Bombs directly in the base kit. Finally, her ultimate has inherited the disarm her tear used to have, disarming every champion affected for a small duration. Use this in coordination with- mm, I don't think so. What's the auto attack? It seems to be the same. Like, that's all I give a shit about. The auto attack was the only thing that people cried about. Everything else is meh. With your team to shut down a push or start your right? The team is super proud of where she has gotten and are excited for player feedback. Yeah, but the team is gold. Who gives a shit? Speaking of player feedback, let's talk some balance highlights. Furia has been in a polarizing spot. Let's go. It's a flank now. So I'm guessing the auto attack stayed the same. It's just the range is like this. Is fully invisible to enemies, and when you cancel it, she reappears at the fuse as an engagement. So what? We have made changes to him, but allow for more nuanced decision making in game. Let's address the spirit. It seems garbage. Among us. For the first time. I mean, the ghost makes you invisible, so you don't see where he's, she's gonna go. I think that's okay. In five years. I mean, they're not gonna change those, right? Champion is forsaking their class to join a new one. Kasumi. Is now a flank. As a part of re envisioning the Death's Howl, we have made changes to every single ability in her kit. Yokai this seems faster. Increased damage and less lockout time, but reduced range to be closer to her new peers. Reduced Sadly range. Is shifting from a kill button to a more nuanced sustain. She'll now have it up more often, but with reduced damage. However, instead of disarming her targets at max stacks, she will self heal an amount based on each stack she has on an opponent. This ability now also generates stacks, meaning it can be used as an engagement tool. Oh. Body and soul has been transformed into a true movement ability. You will still Thanks leave your good luck. Mind. However, Kasumi's spirit is fully invisible to enemies, and when you cancel it, she reappears at the spirit's location now. This makes her extra crafty in how she dips through the maps and approaches team fights. Spirit Lair is also renamed Spirit Traps and takes on the functionality of her old Talent 2 Spirit Bombs directly in the base kit. Finally, These are bots. Has inherited the disarm I'm telling you, they're disarming every chance. Look at that. You can't even tell the thing on the bottom that I. Look at the bottom. Do you even notice these? I just noticed them. So I don't. What was wrong with being on the left side? Being affected for a small duration. Use this in coordination with your team to shut down a push or start your own. The team is super proud of where she has gotten and are excited for player feedback from people. I mean, they, this is probably Speaking so they can feedback, record it. Let's talk some balance highlights. Furia All right, let's see Furia. Player. Let's see Furia. Honestly, I think it's... I don't care. As long as this champion is single damage, I'm not interested. Like, single heal, sorry. I hate the fact that I healed that guy. But I healed that guy. Let's say I heal, I heal, uh, I heal her. But then she dies because I'm on a cooldown. With Grover, I press Q. They're both healed. Why would I want Furia in this case? Team has listened heavily to feedback since her cherish changes on her place in the support lineup. After a lot of testing, we are reworking both cherish and exterminate. Again? For starters, base Kindle Soul will be inheriting a weaker version of the original cherish's healing bonus and range. This will make it a more viable. Bro, oh, I we're. I... Kindle Soul will be inheriting a weaker version of the original. Weaker version of the original Cherish's healing. So they go back. This will make it a more viable healing option across. Bonus and range. This will make it a more viable healing option across talents, but much less than she has been handing out recently on Cherish. Hmm. Cherish itself will now provide a small AOE. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is what I was saying. Cherish chain itself will now provide a small AOE. How small are we talking about? 
target, sharing a percentage of the healing with me. Or nearby teammates. My, you know, to her sister, Sarah's. Nearby <laughs> teammates, similar to her sister, Sarah's. Exterminate will now focus on her wrath passive instead. Nah, that's not gonna be that big. It's probably like heals this guy and the guy next to him and the next guy next to him. Because she has no cards to expand the range, but Ceres does. Instead of Pyre Strike, increasing the attack speed per tier to 15%, up to a cap of 45%. But what, it was 45% before on Pyre Strike. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? No, it was 65. Then it was 45. That may sound like a minor change, but when her wrath is fully ramped, she's a force to be reckoned with. Speaking of supports, Aya was a long requested change. I mean, yeah, let's buff her. Part of her identity. Lifelink's current effect will be shifted into base kit. We're playing Aya. More core part of her identity. Lifelink's current effect will be shifted into base kit, meaning Luna will always be able to heal her teammates around Whoa! her regardless of talent. The new Lifelink will instead make it where Luna and Io share half the healing they receive with each other, allowing a healing-centric Io to focus without worrying too much about Luna's health bar. We've all yeah, okay, so we use the same talent. We always do... <laughs> you can't play him? Also improve the visibility of Moonlight. Looking at Kasumi's new peers, Caspian has been struggling since we took a swing at his ability to build stacks. Instead of restoring that, we're reducing the ammo cost of love and improving both love and war's bonus attack speed per stack to allow him to feel more. I don't like Fury either because single target, but now it seems like it's going to be better. Into deadly momentum, making the twirl optional and allowing players to continue moving after the ability ends. Finally, Measured Cadence now consumes less ammo, and the projectile now applies a minor slow to... We'll have to see. In a similar vein, Seven has left a clear identity for his fire modes after we adjust his launch state. We're tuning burst mode down in range and damage, and upping the ammo cost to match the amount of bullets visually fired, while Auto is receiving a range nerf, but substantial damage increase. This aims to keep modes ideal at long, medium, and short range, while not thriving in modes outside their own. We also have reduced the swap time on these modes and given Tribunal upgrades some much needed increases. We've also reduced the effectiveness of both the Knight and the Terror to keep Seven's movement a bit closer yeah, okay, DP. to his class. Finally, for front lines, Anar will be seeing a change to her Earth and Guard duration. No, I'm just watching. To make a less potent threat across her kit. Mother's Grace specifically will lose the bonus healing effect it's had. No more double rejuvenate for her. As for Nyx, we are reducing her health and once again hitting Rift Slash. Oh my this god, Nyx is fine, man. I'm watching this on YouTube. Both strength and duration. Her royal presence is also being put on a longer cooldown, asking both of these tanks to invest more to stay alive consistently. These highlights are a small section of our balance. For a full list of changes as well as bugs... Fixes, keep your eyes out for patches. No problem. For the LTMs this patch, we focused on providing twists on our core experiences. Like Nyx was the only one that can fight Inara. Now who the fuck fights Inara? That's it. That's it. They didn't touch Grover. Grover still meta. If the Inara changes shit, they nerfed Nyx. Yeah. Health and Rift Slash. Rift Slash. Wait. The Rift is already 1.5. 125. Whoa. Whoa. How much more? Soon you're gonna fucking remove it. They're gonna remove it. Bro, the, this company is dumb as fuck, bro. You want people to buy something, you buff the fucking champion that you're gonna give the skin to. You don't nerf it.
That's how every other game does it, man. That's how League of Legends does it. That's how my mom does it. These are the only retards that do this. No more double rejuvenate for her. As for Nick, no more double rejuvenate either? Finally. So we're just player as a flank. What's the fucking point on picking on the point anymore? The only thing that kept her on the point was the double the healing. Because she had double he surely rejuvenate on two. I'll be seeing a change to her wait, 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 what the fuck? This class, amount of DR from finally. Oh, they nerfed Inara too. Finally, the frontline Inara will be seeing a change in, to her earth and guard duration. Inara will be seeing a change to her earth and guard duration and the amount of DR. It provides to make a less potent threat across her kit. Mother. This grace specifically will lose the bonus healing effect it's had. So the DR remains. No more double rejuvenate for her. So did it remove Rejuvenate from both? As for Nyx, we are reducing her health and once no. again hitting Rift Slash. This time in cooldown and its Cooldown and strength? Bro, like The duration is 125, isn't it? Rift Slash is the first talent. I mean, I never got to play her because she was permabanned, so maybe now I'm gonna get to play her. There's no reason to ban her. Her base health also gets lower. Like, how can you remove a base health when one of her abilities requires her health? The less health she has, like, does that increase on the F too? Low strength and duration. Her royal presence is also being put on a longer cooldown, asking both of these tanks to invest more to stay alive consistently. You nerf the cooldown, you nerf the fucking duration, and and the fucking increase the cooldown in one. Being put on a longer cooldown, asking both of these. Okay, so we max we max Chronos first now. Tanks to invest more to stay alive consistently. These highlights are a small section of our balance. For a full list of changes as well as bug fixes, keep your eyes out for patch notes. For the LT Listen, people already don't like to play tanks, man. You're just giving them more reason not to play tanks. Nix. Wait, this shadow f show of force remains the same. This is gonna be nerfed. It's two seconds. Is that what he's talking about? Oh fuck, if I press... This patch. We think Rift Slash. This rejuvenate for her. To her Earth. Mother's Grace specifically will lose the bonus healing effect it's had. No more double rejuvenate for her. As for Nyx, we are reducing her health and once again hitting Rift Slash. This time in in cooldown and it's slow strength. Yeah, I don't know. Not on no double rejuvenate. Whatever. I just like having the option of the tanks. You taking tanks are going to be weak again. Cooldown and its slow strength and I like OP tanks, man. Eevee can 1v5. I fuck off. And duration. 
Her royal presence is also being put on a longer cooldown, asking both of these tanks to invest more to stay alive consistently. These highlights are a small section of our balance. For a full list of changes as well as bug fixes... This guy's dying to bots, them. man. For the LTMs this patch, we focused on providing twists on our core experiences. First up, Swift Siege. This quick variant of Siege sees teams starting at 2 out of 4 scores. None of these tanks 1v5 won right now. None of them. Unless you're all AFK. There's not enough damage in... Oh, it's up on the website. Look how crowded that looks. I don't like that. It's so ugly. I want to see the video. Meaning a single push can win. We read after. We read after. Players will have increased credits and movement speed to keep this mode blazing fast. We hope its more casual feel provides a new way. Bro, it's already casual. Everyone monkeys. picks monkeys. Then we have Team Arena, a gunplay-focused variant of Team Deathmatch. Ability regen rates are showing your sync three original versions <gasps> for our most chaotic mode. Classic maps as a queue holding three original versions of our. Region. People have been begging for years. I remember these trees. I don't remember that one. I remember these. I was such a noob, I would run into them with Lex. Maps. Timbermill, Borders Gate, and Stonekeep. Explore these maps' roots in this nostalgic romp to honor how far the game has come. That's all for this developer update. We hope players Wait, that's it? all the changes headed to Paladins and are excited to hear feedback from our PTS players this weekend. Thank you for this watching. Weekend? Stay tuned for more info and notes as Valor's End arrives later this month. Take care. It is an upgrade.